It's another edition of the Valley's most in-depth weather video. We call it Weather for Weather Geeks, but even if you're not a weather geek, uh, hopefully you'll find this video to be useful. We do these each weekday uh, evening uh, that I work, and you can watch this anytime on the Storm Tracker 21 app, wfmj.com slash weather, my weather blog, which is ericwfmj.com, uh, my YouTube channel, my Facebook, my Twitter, there's all sorts of places to find my stuff, including uh, this video. We're almost halfway through the month of November. It's been pretty chilly so far. The uh, cooler than average days have definitely outnumbered the warmer than average days, including today with an official high at the airport of only 42 degrees. So for the month so far, we are at 3.2 degrees below the average. Will we rebound before the month is through? That's an interesting question. We'll talk about the longer range in a couple of minutes here. Uh, it was a struggle today with the uh, overcast skies that we expected. Uh, temperatures did not move much, but notice what happened this evening. The sky cleared. The, the stratocumulus clouds finally went away, and the temperature dropped like a rock all of a sudden at 7 p.m. Uh, temperature should level out uh, for the rest of the night. Not a whole lot going on on the national uh, radar and satellite composite this evening. Uh, we do have a cold front, though. That front is... Let me draw it for you. It's kind of right in here. This is what's going to track our way tomorrow bringing with it some rain and cooler weather to follow for Thursday. So let's talk about Wednesday. Wednesday starts dry, even a little sun, but the clouds will thicken up. The sun will fade behind an increasing uh, deck of high and mid-level clouds, and eventually rain clouds push in. But this is going to be pretty late in the day. You know, the sunset now is a little after 5. The daylight hours tomorrow should be fine. If you want to rake leaves or do something outdoors, it's right around or just after sunset. Uh, that the rain pushes in and it'll set the stage for a soggy Wednesday evening for us uh, across the Mahoning and Shenango Valley. So as we break this down hour by hour, our rain, chan rain chances, that is, uh, really ramp up again after about 5 p.m. And it looks like it's going to rain for a good chunk of the evening and more scattered showers as we go into uh, tomorrow night. As far as how much rain, here's a look at our latest computer modeling uh, showing uh, an average of maybe around a quarter of an inch worth of rain. Wednesday into Wednesday night. We might add a little bit to that on Thursday with perhaps some light rain and drizzle trying to linger. We'll show that uh, here on our model. I think Thursday is going to be a day kind of like we've had over the last couple of days. Slate gray overcast, kind of just ugh, looking like November. Now, the model's trying to spit out some snow here and there on Thursday. I think what's more likely is that this is just drizzle and real light rain and temperature struggling. You know, we might not get much above 40. Uh, coming up on Thursday. Just not a very nice day. Uh, thankfully, things will improve for a time on Friday. Pretty decent day on Friday. We'll get into the mid-40s, and uh, we'll see some sunshine for a change Friday afternoon. But then the game changer coming our way. This is the front that uh, will really strengthen and sharpen up as it comes east going into the upcoming weekend, leading to a good chance for rain, wind, and eventually snow. Let's talk about the wind, because overall this will probably be the highest impact kind of a deal. Trash can... Uh, trash cans could be flying down the street and that sort of thing, and a lot of leaves blowing around on Saturday. Now, already by midday, we're probably gusting to 25 to 30. I think the windiest part of the day is probably late in the day. We're talking 35 to 45, maybe even 50-plus mile-per-hour gusts. And I can't even rule out a thunderstorm uh, before the day is through uh, coming up on, uh, on Saturday. Uh, there's still some timing differences between our models uh, with the front on Saturday. Some faster, some slower, that'll make a big difference as to what kind of a day it ends up being. The faster ideas would suggest that we reach a high first thing in the morning and then temperatures fall. I lean more towards the slower camp, which suggests a late day frontal passage, giving it time to warm into the mid-50s uh, before the day is through. It'll stay pretty blustery then into Sunday, and the air mass is definitely going to change. Uh, this is the European model of snow output through Thanksgiving. I think there's going to be some lake effect on Sunday. I don't think it's a huge deal locally. Uh, could there be a few inches, a handful of inches up in Lake Geauga, Ashtabula, Erie, Crawford counties, PA, up into Chautauqua, Cattaraugus County, southwest New York? Yeah, sure. Even several inches up in southwestern New York. And maybe down towards Warren, uh, PA, Bradford, PA. And uh, parts of New England will do pretty well uh, as well. As far as right before Thanksgiving, not real sol sold on any sort of real big impactful storms, including snow, uh, for travelers right before Thanksgiving. But, of course, we'll be updating that as we get a little closer. Here's a look at my forecast for the next seven days, high temperature-wise. Uh, one above-average day, that is Saturday, and then the bottom falls out. Sunday, that 35 will be deceptive. It's going to feel more like 22, 23 most of the day on Sunday with that howling wind. 
All right, let's talk about uh, the pattern as we head into th the Thanksgiving period. Again, a little too early for specifics. I, I doubt we have any big storms, but real high confidence it's going to be chilly, if not cold. Uh, we've got a flow here on Thanksgiving morning coming right out of Hudson Bay, down across the Great Lakes, into the Mid-Atlantic States. We've got a low-pressure system up here across uh, the Canadian Maritimes. That's a cold-looking weather map for uh, Thanksgiving Day. When we start looking at some of the uh, model output here, here's a look at the European Ensemble high temperature forecasts for Thanksgiving and beyond. And uh, it would suggest that we're not much better than 40 on Thanksgiving. I think that's reasonable and is generally supported, even though, even though there's some model differences for next week. The overall trend, there's some fair agreement on this. This is the GFS model, 37 for a high Thanksgiving day. So I think it's probably going to be somewhere between 35 and 43 for a high on Thanksgiving day. And that would be below average, not crazy. So we certainly had colder Thanksgivings. But uh, yeah, it looks like a, a pretty chilly one. But I'll tell you, there's, there's some real model challenges in the longer range. The end of the month and into December, a lot of headaches for long range forecasters, a lot of conflicting signals. I'm going to show you one set of modeling here that suggests it's a blowtorch in December. You know, I've been talking a lot lately about, oh, my forecast in December is probably too warm. Here's a look at the climate forecast system, uh, the American modeling here of uh, five day chunks, warm, 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 all the way through Christmas. Uh, you know, I can't discount that. I don't think it's likely, but I can't discount it at this point. And there's, you know, other methods of forecasting, including, you know, looking at analogs past years that suggest it's going to be a colder December. There's some modeling that suggests it's a colder December, but not all the modeling is singing that song. In fact, there's some pretty large spreads in the modeling, not only for December, but for the end of November as well. So some real challenges coming up in the longer range. We'll hope to sort things out over the next couple of weeks. Thanks for watching tonight's weather for Weather Geeks. Don't forget about my updated forecast tonight on 21 News at 11 and get your forecast anytime with the Storm Tracker 21 app.